Okay, today we need to talk about uh, tire pressure monitor systems. And uh, Firestone Tire Recall, more than 100 automotive fatalities were attributed to Firestone tires that lost their tread when they ran underinflated. So friction heated is beyond their capability to handle. The tires blew out, delaminated, and the vehicle rolled over. So uh, if running underinflated tires, just like running tires are too old, it's really, really dangerous. And so that's where this tire pressure monitor stuff came from. So they pushed the Clinton administration to legislate the TREAD Act. And that act mandated the use of a suitable TPMS technology in all light motor vehicles under 10,000 pounds to help alert drivers of severe under inflation events. Now, can you tell me a way that I could check my tire pressure without using tire pressure monitor sensors? Hmm? No, I'm talking about driving down the road. You'll feel it, won't you? You'll, I mean, you can hear it. Not really. I mean, I, I mean, I need something that will turn on a light on the dash when I'm driving down the road. You know? hey, don't you think an underinflated tire is going to roll faster than a tire that's fully inflated? Because it's like a smaller wheel. Wind stars. Mm -hmm. Ford Windstars and some of the other vehicles, like a, a 2007 Toyota Solara, I don't know what are your models, they don't have tire pressure monitor sensors in them, but they do have tire pressure monitoring by reading the speed of the wheel. Now, the Transportation Recall Enhancement Accountability and Documentation, can you remember that? That's like fluid analysis by stimulation of copper alpha reactions, isn't it? Okay. Transportation Recall Enhancement Accountability. You know how, how, how hard they had to work to get that acronym to come out to tread? They moved the words around. Anyway, since 2012, it's been illegal. Think about this now. This is really important. For an automobile or repair facility to knowingly not reinstall a functioning TPS system if it arrived at the facility with a functioning TPS system. If they come to your shop and the TPS system is working, TPMS system is working, it's illegal for them to give you that car back with it not working. See what I'm saying? In other words, you, if the customer comes, it's illegal for you to get it back to them when it's not working. Well, that means if the vehicle came into your shop with a working TPS, it should leave the same way. This is stuff that you didn't know, isn't it? Really important. All right. The sensor, basic rule, sensors only transmit, they do not receive when they're on a the vehicle. They only put out signals. They're not listening to nothing. All right, you got a little antenna, which is actually your little the metal thing. You got your battery, and it's in there, and there's a little, the pressure sensor is in a little hole right there. See, so if you don't have air pressure, it's not going to be awake anyway, so they're not awake all the time, especially if they're in the box on the shelf. Sensors receive signals when the TPMS system is in a reload, and the tool is held next to the tire by the valve stem. So the tool excites the transmitting antenna and more or less tickles the sensor to get a response. You have seen me do this, haven't you? Put that tool out there. You know, you hold it down there, you point it to the tire, right there by the sensor, and you push the button, and then it'll tell you how much pressure is in the tire, what the serial number of the sensor is, how many megahertz, you know, 315 or whatever that it's talking. We got one like that. The OTC was the one that we got. Now, there, the Malco man, the tire store guy over at Enterprise showed me the Malco man has a sensor. He's got a whole bevy of universal sensors that will work, and he's got a special tool that goes with them. And uh, I think he just gives you the tool if you're buying the sensor from him or something. It's the best deal I've ever seen going. And a tire shop guy uses those things. They work real good. TPMS sensors usually have an accelerometer that is activated by movement. What's an accelerometer? Have you ever seen one? Do you have one in your possession? On, phone. on your phone. You know how it knows when you're moving it? That's an accelerometer. Right? They send their little packets of data to the receiver or a movement happen, or the sensor detects sudden low pressure. So when it's active, the sensor usually transmits its info every quarter of a minute, half a minute or every 60 seconds. So a quarter of a minute is how many seconds? 20. 15. 15. Don't play dumb with me. All right. Now then, if the sensor doesn't feel motion, it will go to sleep 10 to 20 minutes after the car is in park. Note that if a relearn procedure is attempted with active sensors, the system might hear more than one sensor talking, which can confuse you in some cases on some systems. Other TPMS cars shouldn't be nearby. 
other TPMS cars should not be nearby. The car should be a ways from any other TPMS cars. So if you're shooting this one and that one over yonder wakes up, you get issues. You know what? Some Fords, like my pickup, have got TPS MS sensors that are strapped to the rim with a metal strap with a wall way around the rim instead of built in an air valve. Uh, several years ago, my 07 F-150 turned on a tire pressure warning light, and when I broke the tire down, this thing had come apart and was rattling around inside the tire. I had to pay 50 or $60 for a new sensor. Some units have a light. Some that only have a light don't use TPMS sensor. They use the ABS sensor to detect wheel speed because the tire with low pressure rolls faster, and others have a really sexy display. They go out of their way to make it look real nice. Uh, some of them may need to be driven a certain distance, so the TPMS module can match the sensor IDs and locations. Uh, some of the Chryslers have got little uh, receivers in the wheel wells, but they've only got three. Think about that for a minute. They've How only got three. Huh? How did you get the last two? Because it's the only one that it hadn't read off one of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> you only got four tires, you just need three of those if you're going to... You know. Well, see, it's really important, like on these Impalas and stuff. Uh, we had an Impala here that every time we went to the tire store over here close by, they would rotate the tires and they never relearned the sensors so that the system would know. Now, if all you have is a light, it don't matter about relearning the sensor. But if you've got the display that's saying left front is at 32 PSI, right rear is at 28 PSI, you know what I mean? You'll put, we've actually had them come in here and people have kept on trying to get that thing on the dash to read right and little did they know the sensors weren't arranged properly so the one it thought was left rear was actually right front and they put like 50 pounds of air in a tire trying to get it to change. It ain't going to change instantly anyway. You give it some, you know, and you watch it for a little bit. So I used to, on, on the tires that have the, excuse me, the cars that have the TPMS on the dash that tells you how much it is in each tire. That's the gauge you need to use, not this one in your hand. So I like to have a, a helper sitting there, and I put some air in there, and I says, tell me when is it 33 or 35 or whatever it calls for. And because you may have your gauge not reading the same as that one on the dash, and that causes confusion too. So use the one on the dash when you're putting that stuff in there. Remember that it must be done in the right order on GM, left front, right front, right rear, left rear. That'll be on the pop test. All right, can you remember that? Left front, right front, right rear, left rear. You're starting at the driver's side front and you're going around the car clockwise. Okay? All right. The module needs to know which sensor is on which tire after rotating the tires if it has the display that tells you what's what. All right? Let me see if I can get this to play. There it's going to play right now. All right, now you look at on the GM. On the GM, you turn on the key. And you match the lock and unlock buttons on the fob at the same time. And it goes honk, honk. Hear that? All right, now this is on an Impala. All right, and so I got this, this one here. We're using the old brick one. And we hold it here. See that? I found the thing. And he goes to the right front. And he's holding it by the tire close to the sensor. Watch what he does. There we go. Now we're going to the right rear. You have to do them in this order, guys. If you don't do them in this order, it'll foul them up. But it's, it's assuming you're doing them in the right order. You can do them in the wrong order, screw everything else. Nope. Now listen. See, that tells you when it's done. And now it knows where all four of them are. Is that cool stuff? Or what? And that's the tire pressure one that you're sending on a late model Chevrolet. This is the 2009 model. 2009 is not late model anymore. Well, a lot of the Nissans, check the manual to be sure, you can ID the sensor this way. You put 36 PSI in the left front, 33 in the right front, 30 in the left rear, and 27 in the right rear. And you got to connect the scan tool and navigate to BCM and select ID register under the BCM. Adjust the tire pressures to the value you've shown and drive at 25 miles an hour or more for a while. Because it sees those pressures, it's going to feel like you put them in there on purpose after you've got it looking. 
and it'll, it'll know which wheel is where. Then. Now I will tell you that the Nissan one, unless you've done a lot of Nissans, the Nissan one is aggravating and tricky and will beat you up and all manner of things. I mean, there's, Nissan will trip. The one, the, the tire pressure monitor system it'll throw, that have always thrown me the worst is the Nissan. If you're used to the Nissan, you know, maybe somebody else doesn't have as much trouble as I do, but it can be rough. All right, breaking it down, don't bust a sensor. If it has a nut, take it off and let the sensor fall into the tire. Have we done that here? We have, haven't we? All right, if the sensor has a rubber stem, break the tire bead 90 degrees from the stem location and be careful not to break the sensor when removing the tire. Some sensors cost $250 each. Stop fiddling with your phone and pay attention to what's on the next slide. Tire pressure monitor sensor at 12 o'clock position. Tire pressure sensor right behind the duck head. The duck head is the thing we're putting down to, you know, to turn it. All right. All right. When removing the tire, make sure it's in front of the duck head. See that? And bring it down. Now, in other words, this one right here is whenever you're breaking the bead. You want this to be at, at six or nine when you're breaking the bead. You don't want to break the bead right where that thing is because you will tear it up. All right. Most sensors are calibrated to a cold tire pressure for a particular vehicle, but procedures are vehicle specific. Also, the GM ones have got rubber stems that look like a regular tire pressure, I mean, look like a regular valve stem. But what you do is you try to bend that rubber stem with your finger. If it bends real easy, it's not a tire pressure monitor. But if it's hard and stiff, it is a tire pressure monitor. Those you can't take out and put back in very easy at all, so you just need to be really careful not to tear them up. For each 10 degrees of ambient temperature, tire pressures will change about 2% or 1 PSI. Winter's coming on, when the temperature changes in some parts of the country, that could mean a difference of 5 PSI. And that could turn on the tire pressure light just because of tire temperature. Tires heat up while driving, it causes the air inside the tires to expand unless it's filled with nitrogen. And if it's got nitrogen in there that's dry, it doesn't expand. That's Adam. Wow. Yeah. That, that, was a, that was in 2002. All right. You get it? All right. Now there's Adam again. Say hello. All right. What is a good investment a consumer and or a shop can make in service to GPMS? Use good tire pressure gauge. Handle the gauge with care. If you drop your tire pressure gauge, have you, have you all dropped my tire pressure gauge? You can't drop it, have you? Would you tell me if you did? If you dropped it, you can't trust it anymore. You need to get rid of it. Get you a new one. Okay? Of course, there's a lot of mechanics there. I said, I don't give a rip. As long as I feel like it's close enough, it'd be I. Mm -hmm. Dropping a gauge or only four feet can change your reading, and that goes for digital and analog gauges. Most tire pressure sensors are activated with a 125 kilohertz signal, but the activation frequency varies from vehicle to vehicle because some require more power to trigger sensor transmission than some of the others. Okay? All right. They transmit information and communicate with UHF signal that ranges from 314.9 to 433.92 megahertz, and anything transmits in that window can cause interference, but this scenario is not very common. Metal can block the signal, and block it as a form of interference as well. Technically, you're not supposed to reuse the nut, the grommets, or the valve stem. That rule is not generally followed. In other words, you're supposed to have an assortment of these with some new rubber seals and all that. And you'd be surprised a lot of the time you'll find them leaking. If you got a tire that's leaking, if you're looking for a leak on it, and it's got one of these, you know, valve stems with the nut on it, and you spray some soapy water in it and thing. You know, you're gonna, you can, you'll find it leaking right there, that seal right there is a, is a leak point. How can you tell what you got? Remember what I told you? If you can bend that thing really easily like that, it bends when you gently have proper pressure, it's a regular rubber stem. Out there has got a pipe going all the way down to the little antenna, you know, going through there. And it ain't going to bend easy, even though it looks like that. All right, the sealing grommets are engineered to work at a certain torque. Anything more can cause the seal to leak. This one right here was one we found leaking, sticking in the water and bubbling right there. You can damage the nut or sensor by over tightening it. So you should clean the rubber grommet with a rag and gentle detergent when reinstalling it to prevent leaks from, or, from you know, particles and stuff getting trapped there. 
Our TPMS sensors are able to report on the status of their battery life. Some sensors can report on the status of their battery life. Some sensors cannot. Parts girl, you need to know this, right? Temperature changes colder can affect battery voltage, and that will change as the tires warm up. You know, when a battery is colder, typically, other than a hybrid vehicle battery, when it's colder, it doesn't, you know, put out as much heat. TPMS batteries have a long shelf life. The sensor doesn't turn on until tire pressure rises above a certain PFI. What I have done is I've taken a sensor to see if it was good in the box, and I put uh, my rubber tip blow gun on that little pressure sensor and pull the trigger, and then use, have somebody use the little tool, and it'll wake up and give a signal. Uh, battery life depends on sample rate, drive cycles, environment. Sensor batteries usually last 70 to 100,000 miles or 7 to 10 years. How long do they last? 7 to 10 years or more. That's not too hard to remember. 70 to 100,000 or 7 to 10. Right? Just remember that. Can the tire type and or placard value be changed if the market tires are wheeled or installed? Now the tire type and placard value, you've seen these, I've showed it to you before, are stored in the TPMS receiver as calibration that can be changed by flash programming some vehicles. That's misspelling. Since the low pressure number is calculated as a percentage of the number of pure oil placard, calculating the value will bring the vehicle back to compliance with the law. Sick of seeing that stupid light, can TPMS legally be turned off for this vehicle? No. You can turn it off. Some people put a picture of their uh, boyfriend or something in front of it, though, you know, a few piece of tape over, I guess. But will a tire pressure sensor fit my fancy new wheels? Good question, right? Not always. If the valve stem hole is placed in such a way that motion detection components will not work correctly, that's a problem, and there are other problems as well. You know, the thing is, uh, it's, this is a since the thing you put all the funky wheels on there, you may have some that don't work. Uh, the electronics instructor, that black charger he drives, he has trouble with his sensor because of the fancy wheels he's got on there. Um, why are dots or a pressure value of 148 PSI sometimes displayed after a battery disconnect? It's waiting for updated pressure information. Uh, the display seen here indicates a dead sensor. See that one? Some vehicles, the OBD2 system port can be used for relearning and troubleshooting. I'll tell you what's really cool. Over at uh, Geneva, I've got two Altel scan tools that are, you know, not quite as advanced as this one here, but one of them has got a tire pressure monitor tool built into the actual tablet. Pretty cool. And it's got a little tire pressure symbol up there. And so if you're doing the learning thing, all you got to do is, you know, set the tablet up and hold it down there close to the... <laughs> and it, it actually is a tire pressure monitor tool. It's pretty darn simple. And uh, you know, I like that one over here. Uh, anyway, all right. The three basic types of replacements are direct replacement, programmable, and universal. Leave it to me to forget the word universal. Did you answer all your questions? I missed one. Uh, you missed one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's, which, what's, what number? Uh, which vehicle has a procedure to set the tire pressure? Number five. Who, who got number five? What would you put for number five? Nissan. Nissan. That's the one where you had to set it in all the different pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's actually other ways to do it, but that's one of the ways. You, they try to come up with a way to where you, you can do it, even if you don't have the fancy equipment, you know. And that's the end of the slideshow. All right. Anybody else miss any other ones? Four. You missed number four? TPMS sensor are always at the valve stem. True or false? False. Where are they sometimes? Strapped around the rim on my pickup. Remember when I talked at great length about that? Did you miss that for some reason? No, I marked it. You marked it. All right, anybody else miss any other ones? Uh, TPFS sensors are always active, true or false? It's false. False. They're, uh, what's number two? TPMS okay. systems that won't, don't have TPMS sensors? True. 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 Why is it a good idea to do a TPS relearn when no other cars are nearby? Because you may get uh, data from other cars. Yep. Uh, which of the vehicles got the Procedure S Nissan for each 10 degrees? 
What? One PSI. One PSI. Why should you have an assortment of TPMS nuts on him? You're supposed to replace them in service. Most people don't. Um, all TPMS scissors are able to report the status of their internal battery life. Remember on these tests, if it's always, never, all, that's a red flag. Right? If a customer gets tired of their ABS light, you can disable it with a scan tool. Well, technically you can, but it's a little bit. Actually, you can't disable it with a scan tool. It, will, it, will say, it doesn't give you an option to go and turn off the TPMS system. I don't think so. Well, I think possibly. All right, the three different, what's the three basic types of replacement sensors? The red, the red, the red, the red, the red. All right. Okay. Is everybody happy?